when you think about what the most amazing place is that people meet and work and play, I can imagine in 20 years that place not being on the surface of this earth. As early as I can remember, I was fascinated by this idea of simulation and of creating spaces. The thing that I naturally wanted to do was figure out some way to use the internet to connect tons and tons of machines together and have those machines create a world and then go into that world and see what people would do with it. That was really the idea behind Second Life. It was my first attempt at creating a world to do everything in 3D, move, communicate, build. With VR hardware, the idea behind Second Life of creating this open digital world is going to finally be fully realized. What High Fidelity is, uh, is a software platform that lets people experience shared VR. People together building, creating things in VR spaces. The first work that we've done at High Fidelity has really focused on two things. Being able to talk to somebody face to face, see your hands moving, see their hands moving, nod your head, speak to them, and also manipulating things. Because we think that, you know, using your hands to manipulate physical things is just a core part of the human experience. Just like the internet, there's this big question of what are we first going to do with VR? In the next year, Kids are going to be able to put these things on and be completely inside a learning space with a teacher. Ending kind of business travel, I think, is another very possible near-term impact of VR. To have a two-hour meeting and fly to New York to do it, you know, and spend 10 hours of travel time for a two-hour meeting is pretty ridiculous. I suspect that we won't even remember the video games in a few years' time, not because they weren't cool, but because the overall impact on humanity of VR is going to be quite a bit larger. When you think about shared VR, you think about like building New York, right? And you've got this new New York that you can go to and have amazing meetings and entertainment and whatever. It wouldn't surprise me to see VR also be an escape where you are in New York and you put that headset on and you are suddenly standing by a river in a forest and there's nobody around and you actually use VR to remove yourself from the world for a while. If you look at the smartphone, it took about seven years for it to go from zero, the first iPhone, to two and a half billion people having these devices in their pockets all around the world. If you look at VR, we're at a similar point. I think we could see seven to 10 years being the same time frame where literally just about everybody on Earth ends up having one of these things. As bandwidth increases and as the speed of the computers increase, that means the size of that new virtual planet, you know, doubles. Uh, every two years. We're gonna have cities in the virtual world that are bigger than any living human city ever will be. The thing that's so cool about virtual worlds is that we are there and that, you know, to the greatest extent possible, the people that you encounter there are real people. It seems inevitable that once virtual worlds become literally larger in scale and also offer that one-on-one -on -one experience that is identical to this, to right now, it seems to me that almost certainly the majority of our creative time and our business time and our playtime is going to move there.